Hello, hi, and welcome. This is Dr. Hadi, and welcome to my channel, Medical Globe. Dear students, today I brought a very special, highly informative topic that is from biochemistry. Uh, the idea of unusual amino acids, selenocysteine, and how selenocysteine is incorporated into protein, the mechanism of the selenocysteine incorporation. Uh, okay, so let's start. F first of all, we will discuss the two amino acids. What are these two amino acids? Their structure and then the mechanism. Before we uh, come to the mechanism, I would like to tell you that there are 20 amino acids from which the body protein are made. These 20 amino acid structure name have been already discussed in one of my video lecture. Among these 20 amino acids, which we also call them as a standard amino acids because they are present in the protein, the body structure protein, not in the human body but other animals as well. Out of the, these 20 amino acids, recently we have discovered two more amino acids. These two amino acids are given a special name that is one is selenocysteine and other is pyrolysine and they are very special very specifically incorporated into protein by a very wonderful and loving mechanism first of all i would like to tell you the structure of these two amino acids come this is a structure of amino acid that we have an alpha carbon on its right we have a carboxylic group we have a carboxylic group COOH and we have amino group hydrogen and the R group in case of cysteine amino acid this is very ordinary amino acid cysteine everyone know in case of cysteine amino acid there will be a sulfur attached with one hydrogen so this sulfur attached with hydrogen it, the amino acid will become cysteine okay and uh, you know this is a sulfur atom cysteine this is sulfur containing amino acid cysteine now if we replace that C sulfur if we replace the sulfur with another element with another element that is selenium that is selenium s e selenium selenium is a rare element it is a rare element it means it is present in our body but we require that in a very less amount so this is selenium and of course selenium is also bound with another hydrogen its valency is two because it belongs to the oxygen family oxygen has two valency sulfur has two so selenium also has two valency now this whole amino acid become selenocysteine it was cysteine because of this it become selenocysteine fine okay fine now we got the structure of selenocysteine at least how to represent it sec sec slash u S E for selenium, selen, and this for cysteine. This is representation of the that amino acid. The special thing about that amino acid is the code. We know that if there are twenty amino acids, for every twenty amino acid, there is some genetic code. Genetic code, at least one, two, or three genetic codes. We know that there are total sixty-four genetic codes for these 20 amino acids among these 64 the four codes are for stop signal right stop signal and remaining 60 are for the 20 amino acids these 64 genetic codes are present in the dna okay this is your dna fine this is your dna and on the dna these 64 codes are present now the special thing is that the stop codons or codes are a u g and g u a there are four more but two are very well known a u g and g u a these 
codons are called usually called for stop signal they give and stop signal during protein synthesis during translation they give stop signal but in case of this amino acid the stop code is u g a u g a uh, sorry this is not a u g u g a and g u a these two are the stop codon but in case of cellulocysteine that is u g a let me confirm it that is u g a yes it is u g a so u g a is usually a stop codon during protein synthesis but in case of this uh, serinocysteine amino acid the codon is u g a now how the u g a identify that whether i am going to code to give the signal of stop or the serinocysteine amino acid this is very special the mechanism now now come to the mechanism if whenever a protein is synthesized we need a ribosome okay and on that ribosome we need messenger rna okay there are codes different codes will be there and we need another am I, uh, uh, rna that is called as transfer rna trna okay so for the let's suppose there is a code there is a code uga let's suppose there is a code uga on messenger rna i know you we know very well in protein synthesis that there are different codes on the messenger rna different codes are for amino acid and whenever the protein synthesis stop there comes a code uga or uag stop code on the pro protein synthesis becomes stop and protein is completed now this code is UGA is present here on the messenger RNA. Now how the messenger that that code will be recognized as for solenocysteine, solenocysteine, and not for stop. In order for that code to be decoded as solenocysteine, the messenger RNA should have one extra structure, one extra structure that is i will write just like a loop a kind of a kind of a special loop that loop is called as s e c i s silinocysteine silinocysteine insertion sequence s for sequence so this is a very special sequence that is attached to the messenger rna which messenger rna that messenger rna which tries to add silinocysteine in protein we know that there are many messenger rnas for different proteins but any protein that need silinocysteine amino acid for that protein the messenger rna should have or must have this kind of stem this month a, a kind of a loop and this is called a silinocysteine insertion sequence element is also sequence element okay that is element so when that sequence is attached with messenger RNA, usually with message, other messenger RNA, this sequence will be absent. And in uh, uh, the absence of this sequence will tell us that UGA will, will recognize the code as for stop codon. Now, when the, trans when the transfer RNA that is here, transfer RNA is attached, on the transfer RNA, there is another amino acid called as serine it called as serine now what what is serine amino acid serine amino acid has only oh here only oh now this this structure now represents three amino acid when there is sulfur it is called as cysteine when there is serine it is called as silinocysteine when there is oh it is called as serine now there is serine amino acid there are some enzyme there are some enzymes which convert that serine which convert that serine 
and into what into selenocysteine into selenocysteine means there are enzyme that will add the selenium atom into the that uh, serine and now the serine amino acid will become selenocysteine so now we, now that transfer rna will attach the the selenocysteine let's suppose we have a, a polypeptide now we have polypeptide and we are going to add one last amino acid that is selenocysteine let's suppose that we are going to add selenocysteine and here we have selenocysteine this transfer rna can recognize that uga is now coding is now giving a signal for selenocysteine and not for stop codon so that transfer rna will bring that selenocysteine and it will attach that selenocysteine with a protein using that signal uga and finally the amino acid will be incorporated into the protein that is a protein as amino acid has been incor incorporated who did this that is transfer RNA. how transfer RNA? in in, in a research article there are some there are number of other proteins that takes part that they, they take part in that mechanism in the recognition but very in a very simple way that uh, the transfer rna carries an amino acid serine with the help of enzyme that amino acid will become selenocysteine and then this amino acid will be incorporated into protein using the code uga this uga will not serve as a stop codon but it will serve as a code for the selenocysteine in this way the mechanism of selenocysteine in protein incorporation has been completed now if you come to the next amino acid that we will not discuss the mechanism only the structure will be there the next amino acid is pyrolysine if you have time you can watch this as well otherwise we don't need to discuss pyrolysine as well pyrolysine pyrolysine it also use a stop codon it also use a stop codon if it is uj that will be uag it will be uag and the structure of uh, the spirulysine is again you have cooh here you have nh2 here you have hydrogen and here you have four ch2s four ch2s and then you have one nitrogen and two hydrogen if there is one hydrogen and two hydrogen this is called as lysine amino acid and lysine, lysine is among the 20 standard amino acids if one hydrogen is replaced by a ring uh, by a ring or a five corner ring uh, you can just add here five corner ring okay that's got a CH3 here just add a five corner ring don't worry just write one CH3 and nitrogen must be there and don't worry this is called as pyrrolene ring now if you add if you replace one hydrogen with this pyrrolene structure this will become as pyrrolysine and this become another amino acid this amino acid is present in the in a special bacteria called methanogenic bacteria methanogenic methanogenic bacteria okay uh, in the protein of methogenic uh, methanogenic bacteria and it is not found in other mammals but this amino acid called as selenocysteine it is present in three uh, groups of um, all the three groups of organism that is archaeobacteria and uh, eubacteria and the third domain that is prokaryotes eukaryotes all prokaryotes eukaryotes it is only present in prokaryote this amino acid is present both in prokaryotes and eukaryotes i hope you got that video lecture and um, you might have also i'm expecting that you enjoyed that enjoyed watching also thanks for watching this video if you understand give us a like and also remember remember us in your prayers thank you bye bye take care